Good afternoon, wonderful people on the W3. In this video, we are going to be talking about my three-month ownership experience with the Tenere 700. Before we do that, I do need to tell you the top three things that I was looking for when I was purchasing a bike. The number one thing was I wanted reliability. The number two thing was I wanted something that I could work on in my limited garage as well as my limited mechanical knowledge. And number three was I wanted something that I could strap luggage to. This motorcycle is kind of a do-everything motorcycle for me. I take it to the store, I go get food, hang out, take it to the twisties, commute on the highway for work. The only thing I don't know how to do, and this is a big thing, is go off-road. So this is going to be a on-road review only. On, I'm hesitant to call it a review. Uh, this is going to be my on-road experience with the motorcycle. I don't feel qualified for giving a review because I haven't ridden that many motorcycles and I haven't been riding for a long, long time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be cutting it through a couple of days. Um, we're going to go over how it is in the city, how it is on the highway, how it is through traffic, as well as in the twisties. So I hope you enjoy this video. This particular segment, I'm going to be talking about how it is going around town, which I would imagine a lot of folks with any motorcycle is using it for, just kind of running around town, um, grabbing some food and going home, things like that. This bike is, just because of its weight, it is not as good as, say, a light dual sport or a little 250 for putting around, but it doesn't mean that it can't do it. Keep in mind, all reviews are pretty, pretty relative. This bike is a struggle for me just because of its size and its weight. I had a XT225, kind of the baby cousin of this bike, and it was so easy to rip around town with. So um, this bike can absolutely do it if you need it to. It can turn in tight spaces fairly well. Um, Parking for me is a little rough, but I'm sure for most it's not really too big of a problem. If I'm on a really steep slope or something, I'll just hop off the bike and walk it back. The torque on this bike is quite good. With 70 horsepower and a fairly heavy bike, I don't really feel the bike scaring me at all off the line or catching me unexpected. Before we go any deeper into this review, I do want to just go over a couple mods that I've changed to make this bike fit me a little bit better. I spoke about some of these uh, before, but I just wanted to say it again so you all could keep that in mind with this review. I do have the Helibar Tour Performance risers that bring the bar up and towards me a little bit. I do have a adjustable clutch lever. I have shaved down the seat about half an inch. And probably the most important thing is I have the 18 millimeter lowering links in the back and I have uh, brought the front forks up the triple clamp about nine millimeters so half of the 18 millimeter links those mods will change the feel of the bike quite a little bit so do keep that in mind as we go further into this review cruising at 30 miles an hour I'm at about four less than 4,000 rpm the bike is very polite at these RPMs. It's not vibey or anything at all. Uh, I can probably do this all day long. What's nice about these longer gears is I can pretty much stay in second or third gear the entire time I'm in town. I could even get off the line in second gear and just leave it forever if you're feeling lazy. Unfortunately, this review is going to be an on-road review only because I have no idea how to ride off-road. Hopefully that is going to be a skill that I learn in the future with this bike. Stay tuned for that. The engine can get pretty hot when you're on these surface streets with not a lot of airflow. I'm at 219 degrees right now at the moment. My right leg can definitely feel some heat coming out, but kind of the theme of the review, it's nothing that's unbearable. Alright, here we are doing some twisties. Now the T7 is definitely top heavy, but once you get it leaned in, it will totally hold the lean for you. It is much better on road 
than I think people give it credit for. Granted, I'm not doing it justice either because there are much better riders than me. But I just wanted to show you guys what it is like. The long gears, as I said earlier in the review, help a lot just to minimize how much shifting you're doing. I have a bad habit of being in a gear too high and lugging the engine out of the turn. I am working on that. Um, let me lower gear here, go into the lower gear. Um, the front brakes, definitely a little squishy. Definitely wish I had more feel in the front, but it's not bad. These stock tires, I'm really happy with being an on-road rider. These are the Pirelli Scorpions. And I love them on the road. I believe the max power comes between, I want to say 8 and 9,000 RPM. You'll have to double check me on that one though. But I honestly love taking this bike to the twisties. It is so much fun for me. And I think you guys would have fun too if you had a T7. Alright, this is going to be the highway portion of the review. I am currently cruising at about 80 miles an hour on the highway and there honestly isn't much to complain about. There is a little bit of buffeting, but it could be my helmet as well. Uh, I'm wearing a Bell MX-9, which is definitely not the most aerodynamic and quiet helmet out there. I do know some of the folks on the internet have changed their sprockets to uh, bring the RPMs down a little bit while they're on the highway. I don't really see it to be a problem. Um, let's do a little pull from, uh, let's slow down a little, give us a little space. We'll do a pull to however long I can. And there is plenty of power, plenty. And cruising in six gear as well. If you drop a gear, you can get even more uh, power. The riding position is a great place to be for a long period of time. I've never had any troubles with my back or my legs or anything like that. Uh, sometimes I do have a little wrist strain, but I think that may be just the position of my levers and things like that. In terms of just sitting on the bike for hours, totally possible. I have shaved down the seat so I can get a little bit closer to the ground. And even then, I don't have too much of a problem with comfort. Maybe if I'm sitting in the saddle for over two hours, I'll start to feel it a little bit. But... It's totally manageable. I do feel because this bike is taller, I get caught in the crosswind quite a bit. Of course, all of the things that I'm saying are completely relative. This is the tallest bike I've ever owned. And if you guys were wondering, here's a pull from 75. Easy 90. Power is not a problem. Now I'm here in California where lane splitting is legal and it is not bad. There are definitely more narrow bikes out there. Oh, and these lanes here are really tight. I don't usually take this road. But it is not a terrible time trying to squeeze in between cars. The LEDs are really, really bright on this thing, which I think do help, especially, you know, morning time or sunset when it's starting to get dark. I'll flash my lights here and there and a bunch of cars will move out of the way, but yeah, totally fine. 
So that's it folks, that is my three month ownership experience of the Tenere 700. I love it. There is no perfect bike and this is no exception, but I love this bike. It has taken me on adventures I never would have thought I would go on. I'm sure you could say that for many, many bikes. Uh, but this bike has enabled me to make videos like this. So, appreciate you all for watching. Thank you so much. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.